Veterinary medicine is a competitive course. Having said that, there is a need for vets. That doesn't remove the competitive nature, but it is an encouragement that at this moment in time, you should be in a good place to make an application. Being a vet entails a lot of different things. It's an incredibly exciting, uh, rewarding uh, career, incredibly diverse career. It offers a lot of different opportunities, but essentially being a vet is a lifestyle choice. It's a 24-hour commitment to working with animals, but not only working with animals, working with people. My biggest advice that I could ever give to a veterinary medicine applicant is make sure that you put in the hard yards before you actually embark on this application. Even before you put pen to paper, make sure you've gone through all of the work experience required, not only from a university perspective, but for yourself, to prove to yourself that this is the right calling for you. It's a career that will have highs and lows in similar frequency, almost on a weekly basis. So the point of work experience is really to analyse in advance of your application that this is really what you want to spend a significant time of your life actually studying for. From the outset, you need good academic grades. That's your GCSE grades and good predicted grades coming out of your A-levels as well. The typical grade profile is two A's and a B up to A star AA and you need to be at the top end of that scale in order to make a successful application. Biology and chemistry will always be the prerequisite requirements for veterinary medicine with chemistry being the strongest of the two subjects. What you're trying to do in your application is get across the sense that you want to be a vet, simplistic as that sounds. You just want to get across what you've done, why you've done it, and what you've learned from it. There is a good structure that you should be adhering to. It should start with a compelling reason as to why you want to do this as a course, and then flowing into what you're studying at A level, why that has helped shape this idea that you want to be a, a, a vet, and then flowing from there into the work experience, which should be analysing exactly what the universities have asked you for. Now, when you're listing work experience, it shouldn't be a shopping list. It should be identifying certain experiences that you've had throughout the course of your work experience that you've really picked up on and that have helped develop this idea that you would like to be a vet, what you learned from it, what you witnessed at that particular moment in time and how that made you feel. We want to know a little bit about you, the person, so a bit of the extracurricular, how you unwind outside of the hard hours that you'll be working as a vet, and then a nice, punchy, almost a one-line statement at the end just to tie the application together. Universities interview candidates in order to find out whether you're a good fit for that university. The way you should always regard an interview is if you've been called to interview, they've already seen a lot of what they're looking for from you as a candidate. From veterinary school to veterinary school, they slightly differ in terms of the interviews that you are offered. Some universities will have a panel-based interview, which may be made up of one, two or three persons and some, which is the slightly more modern approach to interviewing, will get you to be involved in things called MMIs, which are multiple mini interviews designed to test you at different stages on anything from your reasoning and rationale behind wanting to become a vet all the way through to your manual dexterity skills. The standard sort of questions you're going to always be asked at a veterinary interview, whether it's going to be a panel or an MMI, is why do you want to be a vet? Make sure you have a good and very compelling answer to that before you even go to interview itself. Don't let that question catch you cold because it is the easiest question, because often it is the one that trips people up the most. After explaining why you want to be a vet, they will ask you about your work experience. You may be asked questions based upon your A-level studies. You will be asked questions on calculations of uh, medication. Um, so you'll be given some sort of mathematical modeling that you'll be doing within there. Manual dexterity is often one that comes up so you can prove that you have the, the 
uh, the dexterity required in order to be a veterinary surgeon. And then often you'll have questions based upon moral judgments or ethical judgments within there. One of the other key things that you need to be fully up to date on before you go into a veterinary medicine uh, interview will be about trends within the profession uh, in terms of uh, diseases, disease prevention, what's current at that moment in time, what's being done about it, what are DEFRA saying about the whole thing, who's the health minister, all these different questions that will come up as part of the interview. Preparing for an interview, what you need to do is practice, rehearse, have a list of questions that you can ask people to ask you at any point, whether that's going to be a teacher at school, whether it's going to be a family member, whether it's going to be an external company, or even better, whether it's going to be a friend, someone who might also be going through the applicant process themselves, so that you can actually bounce ideas off different people, hear back and get feedback from people and different people to know whether the answers you're giving, you're actually getting the idea across that you're trying to sell. At MPW, for anyone who is looking to become a prospective vet, we spend a lot of time on the application before even putting pen to paper, making sure that you've researched the universities, you've seen what's required of you, that we are checking off all that work experience that you need to have, and then spending the time crafting that personal statement, exchanging it back and forwards until it fully reflects you and what it is that you want to say, making sure the application is as strong as it needs to be before submitting it. And then, after that, making sure that you are supported on the questionnaire side of things. And then the practice interviews in whatever guise and whatever format they need to take.